uh, Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues. Uh, first of all, uh, how uh, NAS guidelines will affect our practice in Egypt, because in Africa, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the only countries that perform EVA are the North African countries like Egypt, uh, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco, and South Africa. Uh, to my knowledge, mm, not a single case of EVA have been done outside these countries. Uh, first of all, does it meet the real VASCA practice? Uh, in 2018, as we know, that the United Kingdom National Institute for Healthcare and Excellence issued the draft guidance on abdominal aortic aneurysm repair uh, uh, and diagnosis. <clears throat> in order to reach a solid uh, data, you have to have an evidence-based practice depending on the research evidence, the consumer involvement, and the clinical experience. The goal that derives the decision <clears throat> is the method, the clinical effectiveness, and the cost effectiveness. Definitely, they have some uh, uh, solid recommendations as better medical care for AAA patients, better follow-up for patients with small AAA, and they recommend faster management and transfer for rupture AAA patients. These are the recommendations that uh, make uh, the dilemma. Patients shouldn't be offered EVA for repair of non-ruptured triple A's and not to offer complex EVA for unruptured triple A if open repair is a suitable option. As uh, they believe that there is no evidence that EVA for unruptured triple A provides long-term benefits compared to open repair. Uh, EVA, although having a lower pay operative mortality, but on the long term, the complications and secondary interventions are more and the cost is higher. What are the drawbacks? Uh, they didn't consider the wide range of observational studies and registers available. The decision for EVA or open repair should be made on an individual patient basis. Uh, the short and long term outcomes achieved with both techniques are heavily driven by the patient's individual variation. The recommendation that uh, open surgery should be offered uh, uh, for unruptured triple A doesn't encourage physicians to make decisions on uh, a tailored patient-by-patient uh, -patient basis, and this is a direct opposition to the, their declared purpose of the NICE committee, as they said that they are not intended to replace the professional expertise and clinical judgment of health professionals as they discuss treatment options with their patients. Concerning the uh, uh, cost, uh, they uh, calculated the cost for open repair by a little bit more than 13,000 pounds, and for EVA is 20,000 pounds, but excluded from the cost, the cost that borne by patients, loss of earnings and productivity, benefit payments and taxation revenue, costs to persons who are taking care, and costs unrelated to the condition and the consideration. And so if this recommendation based on outdated or historic randomized trials, I think the, the answer would be yes, as vascular services have been dramatically changing over the past few years concerning imaging, hybrid management, and EVA devices technology. And also the patients are aware nowadays about the disease and its available worldwide management. Also, they uh, totally rely on RCTs, which represent small contribution of all EVA publications. The real hospital data is sometimes different than RCTs. Decision making should consider individual patient fitness. Cost effectiveness analysis is not that close to day to day practice, and patients themselves value lower early per operative mortality of EVA, and long term survival of EVA is not worse than uh, open repair. The Vasco Society of Great Britain in Ireland has raised the concern about these uh, uh, recommendations as they thought that NICE will put UK vascular practice many years behind the international practice. And also the ESVS and SVS guidelines recommended that the patient should receive clear information about AAA treatment options and to be involved in the decision. For patients with good life expectancy, open repair should be offered, but unsuitable anatomy, EVAR, is a valuable option. Fitness and suitability for aneurysm repair should include input from an experienced vascular anaphetist. Does lack of training on open surgery will affect the result? Uh, most of the studies uh, uh, show that, but this was an article with a striking uh, results. It has been published in 2016 by the Royal Australian College of Surgeons. Uh, EVAR was performed in more than 7,000 patients in the period from 2011 to, to 2014, 
and they showed that the mortality rate in well-trained surgeon is 1.5 compared to 1.6 for the other group. And they showed that there was a slightly higher mortality rate in well-trained vascular surgeons for ruptured but not intact aneurysm repair. And they concluded that reduced exposure to open R by younger trainees didn't significantly affect surgical outcome when compared with those surgeons trained in an earlier period. How nice will affect the practice in Egypt? Uh, in Egypt, our national health insurance system doesn't reimburse all of the EVAR patients. According to the recommendation, by offering EVAR for uh, rupture triple A, but due to logistic problems in our country, the majority of rupture triple A are done by open repair, and this recommendation might help us during negotiation with the health authority to help us to overcome this logistic as rapid repair to specialized centers <coughs> and availability on the on-shelf materials that are needed in these conditions. But uh, for the unruptured triple A with the recommendation that open repair should be offered, this definitely will affect the uh, negotiations in order to embarrass EVAR for unruptured triple A with suitable anatomy. And so, how can we treat ruptured triple A by EVAR while our trainees are not well trained on EVAR for unruptured cases? I think it will be difficult. In complex cases, we don't have a specialized vascular anesthetist, and so we have a relatively higher morbidity rates in open repair. Few cases had been offered FIVAR and debranching few centers, and this is due to financial issues. And debranching is the preferred modality of treatment in our practice. We are collecting our data, and the prelim preliminary results are encouraging up till now. Our local experience in Egypt is now supporting close adherence to the device IFU to improve durability and to reduce the re-intervention rates. Hybrid management may be a good alternative to FIVAR and T-branch. Complex EVAR practice should be limited to centers with experience in regular EVAR, and we should start a national registry program. Thank you.